Hi everybody, uh, this is the first video under the Cost Volume Profit Analysis Series. So, Cost Volume Profit Analysis is something that we will discuss over two weeks. Uh, cost Volume Profit Analysis also is one of the most important concepts in management accounting. In fact, I think uh, it's the bedrock of management accounting. We will build on Cost Volume Profit Analysis as we go on in the next uh, topics in BA 115. For CVP analysis, there will be three videos. The first video is concentrated on the topic of cost behavior. Uh, cost behavior is a very important topic for CVP analysis because uh, the foundation of CVP analysis is to be able to understand the behavior of costs. Now, how do we define the behavior of costs? We will discuss it further as we go along in this video. What are the learning outcomes that we expect from the students, from you guys, at the end of this video? So at the end of this video, you should be able to, number one, determine how to differentiate costs according to its behavior. Okay? Roughly, there are three types, of, uh, three types of costs according to behavior. Number one is variable costs. Number two, fixed costs. And number three, mixed costs. No? So... Given cost information and given information about levels of activity or cost drivers, you should be able to determine whether a certain cost item is a variable cost item, fixed cost item, or mixed cost item. Okay, What is the second objective of this video? It is for you to, ins for, to ensure that you can separate mixed costs into its fixed and variable components using three approaches, which is the high-low method, regression, and the scatter plot method. Okay? And lastly, we need to understand you know, the concept of the relative range and relativity of cost behavior, which is uh, an important assumption in, in cost volume profit analysis. We asked the question, how do costs behave when there is a change in volume? No? Some costs change as volume of sales increases or decreases. Other costs are not affected by any changes in volume. Now, when we talk about cost behavior, as I mentioned, we usually characterize them or describe them as variable costs, fixed costs, or mixed costs. We'll discuss each one in further detail. Variable costs. We discuss variable costs first. I think it's based on the, the, the nomenclature itself. It's very clear what variable costs are. If we define it, variable costs varies in total in direct proportion to changes in the level of activity. Let's break down that definition. Okay, I think one key item in that definition is the concept of level of activity. Okay, no, halimbawa, cost of, uh, if, if you own a fishbowl stand for example, the cost of the fishbowls, yan ay variable depende kung ilan na maibibenta mo. Right? It depends on the level of output. And therefore, you know, we say that it is variable with respect to volume sold. So when we tag an, uh, an item as variable cost, we always need to understand variable with respect to what? Always with respect to some activity level. Okay? And the second important characteristic of variable cost is that it changes in direct proportion to the changes in level of activity. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Okay, when the level of activity increases, total variable costs also increase. Alright? So, for example, we have a hypothetical company here who is selling tablets. Uso yan dahil sa online learning. Okay? So, pinapakita dito that as tab the number of tablets increase from 0 to 100, the total cost of batteries used no, is 0 to 5,500. We can see that as the level of activity, which is number of tablets produced, increase, the total cost of the batteries also increase. Graphically, this is how it will look like. Okay? So, if we graph the total number of tablets produced on the x-axis and the cost of batteries in total in the y-axis, what are we going to see as the relationship? It is a straight line. No? 
and what's important is that when there's zero production there's also zero cost of batteries i think it's also important to further define what how variable costs are you know? aside from increasing in total in direct proportion to changes in level of activity the last the, the last part of that sentence is one of the key qualifiers when can we say that a cost is a variable cost variable cost is constant if costs are expressed on a per unit basis ano ibig sabihin niyan diba when variable cost in total increases it 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 increases in direct proportion to changes in level of activity. Right? But, pag i-convert mo yan on a per unit basis, right, ang isang characteristics ng variable cost is that the cost per unit does not change regardless of the level of activity. Looking at our example, if you look at 25 tablets, for example, the total cost of that is $1,375. The variable cost per tablet is 55 Okay. Now, let's go to the line of 50 tablets, for example. Okay. If you look at that line, the number of tablets produced is 50, total cost is 2,750, and the variable cost per tablet, if you divide 2,750 by 50, is 55 per tablet. Okay. Those two conditions must be present so that we can fully say that a certain cost item is really variable. Okay. Understand? Let's now move on to the next one. Let's look at fixed costs. Okay? What are fixed costs? Fixed cost is a cost that remains constant in total regardless of changes in an activity level. So for example, let's use the same example of the company which produces tablets. For example, he's, he has a manufacturing facility in Pampanga. He has to rent a warehouse no so the cost of rental of facilities in this case is thirteen thousand five hundred dollars and as you can see regardless of the activity level the total fixed cost remain the same okay and since the total rental cost remain the same we can say and we can conclude that this is a fixed cost and i think one aspect which really characterizes fixed costs is if you look at fixed cost per tablet. Okay? If you look at this table, the first column is total fixed cost. If you divide the first column by the second column, which is the number of tablets produced, you will get the fixed cost per tablet. What happens to the fixed costs per tablet? Fixed costs per tablet decrease as production increased right no because of course since the costs are fixed as you produce more the fixed costs are being um, spread over more tablets that's being produced and therefore if you look at it on a per unit basis okay fixed cost per unit is inversely proportional versus fixed versus production or versus the level of activity graphically this is how we will characterize total fixed cost so it's just constant regardless of the number of tablets produced and last is to really um, summarize the characteristics of variable and fixed cost the second column talks about total cost in total okay variable costs change proportionately to changes in volume or the activity level okay if the variable if the total cost increases when the volume or the activity level also increases it's a candidate no to be a variable cost now what confirms that it's really truly a variable cost the second column you look at the cost per unit okay if the cost per unit remains constant regardless of activity level then you have definitively concluded that this cost item uh, th that this cost item's behavior is variable okay let's go to the second row which is fixed cost now if you get the total cost you no know, of this um, item you no know, 
and it remains constant regardless of the activity level, it's a candidate for being fixed cost. Now let's define the third kind of cost behavior and that's what's called mixed costs. Okay? The trouble with mixed costs is that it's difficult to predict them you know, because um, they have both fixed and variable components. Okay? Let's look at this table for instance. If you look at the first column, the first column describes total mobile phone costs. So it increases from 100 to 110 to 120 to 150 dollars. Okay? And then if you look at the number of minutes used, that's for example our activity level or cost driver, when it's 0, you pay 100. When it's 100, you pay 110. 200, you pay 120. Up to 500, you pay 150. So what's the first, the usual first criteria? In total, does it increase or decrease as, as the activity level increases? If you look at the first column, total mobile phone costs increases, right? And as the number of minutes used also increase. So it's a candidate to be a variable cost, diba? So what do you do next? What you do next is you test the cost per unit. If the cost per unit is constant, then you can definitely say it's a variable cost. Okay. Looking at this, third column, look at the total mobile phone cost per unit. It actually decreases over time. No? So it decreases from 1.1 to 0.3 as the number of minutes increase. And therefore, we cannot say that it is fully variable, right? Because yang 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 numbers na yan because that characteristic ng cost per unit na bumababa siya as production increase that's a characteristic of fixed cost so from there you can really conclude na this cost item mobile phone cost is not fully variable no because nag-iiba-iba yung mobile phone cost per unit as production changes okay you can also conclude na it's not fixed cost why uh, tumama nga siya sa phone cost per unit na expectation natin right? pero hindi tama yung cost in total kasi the cost in total increases as the number of minutes also increase so because it has characteristics of both fixed and variable costs we call them mixed costs okay? and the graphical rep representation of mixed costs are like so okay? they have variable and fixed components. No? And therefore, actually, mixed cost might be a little bit difficult to predict unless you are able to segregate the fixed and the variable components. When you segregate the fixed and variable components, it's, it will be more easier to use them in analysis. It will be easier also to describe profit planning or forecasting in the future. Okay, mixed costs are usually characterized or described as a function, a simple straight line function. In this case, y, which is the total cost of the activity or the cost item, is equal to the fixed cost component f plus v, which is the variable cost per unit, times x, which is the level of activity. Okay, okay. Why is separation of mixed costs important? Okay. As I mentioned, it's important to simplify analysis. Okay? Mixed costs need to be expressed in terms of their fixed and variable components. No, the fixed components can be interpreted as standby costs of any service a business needs, and the variable components is the consumption costs. There are three cost segregation techniques, the scatter plot, high-low method, and the regression approach. Uh, the scatter plot and high-low method are really crude estimates. You should do one and two, only if you are required to do crude estimates of fixed and variable components. But you should really do the regression approach. I know that you are already familiar with the regression approach in your statistics courses, so we will not delve too much on the technical aspects. We will delve on the business interpretation of these uh, approaches. Okay, let's start with the high-low method. Okay. For example, we have this information no? in the first column is the months of the year from January to October. 
Second column is the cost of materials handling. And the third column is the number of moves. Ilang beses ginagalaw, ilang beses maglo-logistics para i-deliver ang mga materials from one location to another. No? So in this case, the materials handling cost is the total cost, obviously. No? And the number of moves is your cost driver or activity level. Okay? Step 1 is to compute for the variable cost. How do you compute for the variable cost here? No, the variable cost is simply parang slope of a line, diba? rise over run. Okay? Change in cost divided by change in activity. However, there are a lot of data points here. No? Under the high-low method, which data points do you consider? Okay? Under the high-low method, you look at the high the, the data point or the data set okay which has the highest level of activity okay in this case if you look at the number of moves which is the activity being uh, used the highest level of activity is 500 so that's one point one data point okay and the lowest activity is 100 moves no which is another data point. And based on these two lines, we will form the equation. Uh, based on these two points, form the equation. Right? One thing that must you must consider or must remember, yung highest and lowest, it pertains to the cost driver, which is number of moves. It does not pertain to the cost. Okay? If you look at the second column, okay, what is the highest level of cost? May. So, tama. Pareho, di ba? But if you look at the lowest level of cost, the lowest level of cost is actually in April 1990. Right? But we are not choosing April as the data point because it is the lowest cost, not necessarily the lowest activity level. Okay? So, if you compute the variable cost per unit, that's simply 75 minus 2,000 divided by 500 minus 100. Okay? And from there, you can get 1375, which is the variable cost per unit. Okay? Now, since you have determined the variable cost per unit, the second step is to determine the fixed cost. How do you do that? Okay? You substitute 1375 in the data point. You know? So, for example, if you use the low cost and given the equation y equals f plus vx y is the total cost for the low cost level that's 2000 equals f plus what is the variable cost that we computed 13.75 what is the activity level that's for 100 moves and you can solve for the fixed cost in this case we're able to determine that fixed cost is 625 dollars okay and therefore we now have an equation your equation is y equals $625 plus 13.75x. Okay? And now you have effectively transformed, okay, characterized this cost in terms of its fixed and variable components, which is important in CVP analysis. Okay? The second method is the scatter plot method. Actually, this is the crudest of all methods. Okay? Uh, the first step is for you to plot the data points on a scatter graph. The objective of the scatter plot method is actually it's very crude. Okay. Uh, the idea is, given that this is the plots data point plots, mag-imagine ka ng isang line that cuts across the data points, and try to hit two at least two points in that graph. In this case ito yung na compute ito yung ginawa kong two data points okay so mukha namang nasa gitna na yung line na yan eh ng mga ng data set no more or less mukhang okay na right at nagkataon in that data set ang tinamaan is yung data 1 data 3 data 10 and data 5 okay so what i can do is i can check or i can take two data points and compute no the rise and run or the slope of that line and that becomes variable cost and compute the intercept you know, which is the fixed cost you know, so we go to the, through the same 
if you look at this, let's say I chose data 1 and data 10. So, data 1 is January. Data 10 is October. Okay, data 1 is 100 moves is $2,000. Data 10 is 425 moves, $6,240. If you check, if you compute it using the same method, this is how we compute it. 6240 minus 2000 divided by 425 less 100. The variable cost now becomes 13.046. And you can compute a fixed cost of around $695. Okay? And therefore, your equation now using the scatter plot method is y equals 695 plus 13.046x. Okay? Which changes a little, right? Yung kanina, 13.75, yung variable cost. Pero yung na-compute natin sa scatter plot method, 13.046. But it's okay because the two, the two are actually just approximations. Okay? It's not the technically superior, uh, superior technique. Alright? The technically superior approach is the regression approach. Okay? What is the regression approach? It is to form the best fitting line. You know? What is that best fitting line? It is the line with the smallest sum of squared deviations. Okay? So regression analysis determines the linear function with the minimum sum of squared deviations. And it utilizes spreadsheet packages in Excel. I won't go through the, the technical aspects of it. You know? That's something that you should have learned in your statistics courses will focus on the business application okay so looking at our data points this was our original data points the idea is to also form that line which goes through the best line that that the, the best line that characterizes that data set which minimizes the deviations of each data set from that line okay so pag nagguhit ka ng isang linya dyan sa gitna hindi sasakto yan di ba Hindi sasakto yan lahat, right? But what we're trying to deter determine is that line kung saan pinakamaliit yung deviations, pinakamalapit sila no? as much as possible. So, essentially, that's what regression does. Okay? If you look at the formula of the least squares regression, if you have to do it manually, we usually uh, compute it this way. Okay? So, y equals a plus bx, that is the line that we want to, uh, to, to form, fixed and variable costs. How do, you com how do you compute it? You can compute the variable cost, b, using this equation. So, n times summation of xy minus summation of x times summation of y divided by n summation of x squared minus summation of x squared. It's a very complicated formula, but I'll show you how to compute for it later. And you can compute A no, as Y bar. Y bar is the average of Y minus B X bar. X bar is the average of X. In business, anong ibig sabihin nito? Okay, it's, it's all X's and Y's. No? What is X? X is the activity level. Okay. Remember, para gumawa magawa yung least squares regression, meron kang sariling data muna of historical information no, of activity levels. So that's the activity level from January to October. Those are the excess. What's the Ys? The Ys are the cost from January to December. So let's look at this table. No? So the column of material handling cost will denote that as Y. Okay? which is the materials handling cost. That is the activity level. Yung number of moves, yan ang cost driver. No? So yan ang independent variable. So that's what we denote as X. Okay? How do I usually do this if it's manual? No? Uh, usually you do this by making two more columns. Column 4 and column 5. Okay? If you look at com column 4, what's the label? X squared. So, it's another column where I simply get the square of each X items, which is the number of moves. So, that's 100 squared, 125 squared, 175 squared. Okay? What's the last column? That's X and Y. Okay? Right? So, basically, materials handling cost times number of moves. I multiply the two and that's the, that column. Okay? 
the last column are the second to the last column pertains to total so that's summation of y summation of x summation of x squared and summation of x times y right and then you can plug in the data in the formula okay so how do you do this this is the formula that i reproduced b equals n what is n n is the number of observations in this case there are 10 months so n is 10 okay where is summation of xy summation of xy is 15.7 million fifth column second to the last row okay minus summation of x what summation of x that's 2950 times summation of y where summation of y that's 45100 okay divided by what divide by n which is 10 again summation of x squared where is summation of x squared you look at the fourth column second to the last row that's 1.07 million minus summation of x what's that 2950 get the square of that okay actually that formula is not very intimidating okay once you um, organize you know, your data and computation structure better okay so you can compute for it on your own i won't show the answer here uh, what's letter a a is the fixed cost how do you determine that y bar y bar is the average of y so that's simply 45 100 divided by 10 minus bx bar b is what you got in the second equation and x bar is the average of x so that's 2950 divided by 10 okay and it's as simple as that all right now why do you have to compute it this way actually that's what's in the book and that's the academic way of doing it what's the practical way of doing it the practical way of doing it is use excel so there's a function in excel where you can compute this automatically and it will show this regression output okay using the regression output the ones highlighted uh, in the last two uh, rows the intercept is the fixed cost you know? so the fixed cost is 854.49 or 854.50 no? so therefore that's the fixed cost variable one is the coefficient of the first variable so that's the coefficient of x which in this case what is the business interpretation that's the variable cost per unit and the variable cost per unit using regression is 12.4 12.391 so 12.4 dollars per unit so if you look at the regression analysis you no, know, based on the regression analysis what's the equation for handling cost it's 854.50 plus 12.39 times number of moves all right and just to compare Okay. comparing the two this no, the blue dots are the raw data that we used for January up to October okay the orange line is the result of the best fitting line okay the gray line is the result of the high low method what is your conclusion the conclusion is of course it's going to be different no? because for the high low method you only use two points no which is the highest and the lowest. Nasaan yung highest and lowest? Yun yung under 100 and under 500. Okay? So, if you look at the gray line, yun yung binabisect ng gray line. Right? The orange line, however, is the best fitting line because if you compute the deviations of the blue lines versus the orange line, it is the line which produces the least deviations and therefore supposed to be least error will the high low method always be uh, different than regression not necessarily but most likely it will be different you know? and usually we use high low method for quick and for quick comp computations not requiring details you know? and sometimes the difference aren't so big anyway so it's a practical way to and in and, it, and usually these differences won't make or make a decision you know? so that's why Sometimes we use the high-low method. Pwede na muna, no? Since uh, it won't make or break the decision anyway. Alright? Okay. Okay. A very important item 
that we need to check is the concept of relative range. Okay? Relative range is an important concept because it simply means yung assumption natin ng cost behavior ng bawat cost item okay, is only valid within a certain relevant range. Okay? For example, if you look at this item, in this example, the fixed cost of 81,000, for example, dollars, that is only valid for production of 0 to 2,000 tablets. Okay? Right? Kasi, pag lumampas ka na ng 2,000, baka may additional cost ng kailangan. Right? And therefore, the activity level, the cost will now increase as the, co as the number of tablets increase. Right? So, ang important concept is kailangan ma-realize natin the cost behavior, fixed cost, variable cost per unit is only valid within a certain range of production. What is that certain range of production? Kailangan mo pag-aralan yan. Usually, it's within the current production levels. Pag na-breach mo na yung current production levels, hindi na valid yung fixed cost mo. Kasi baka kailangan mo nang magtayo ng bagong building or kailangan mo nang mag-hire ng isa pang janitorial staff. No? And also, the variable cost per unit can change. No? Pwedeng as you produce more, the variable cost actually decreases, right? Kasi you get economies of scale. Okay? So, the variable cost that you were able to compute, pwedeng maliit na siya. Right? At hindi na siya relevant sa rest of the data mo. So, you have to be very, very um, conscious that these information are only valid within a certain production range. Okay? And so therefore, if my outlier data ka, you have to check, no? Yung outlier data ko ba, applicable pa rin ang relationship na nakuha ko sa outlier data na yun. Okay? And that's where the business portion, the business aspect of the analysis comes in. Okay? So there, this is our first video for cost volume profit analysis and I hope that you're able to learn all of these learning outcomes through this video. Thank you and see you in the next video.